Welcome to this launch of KMO Machine Vision, which is our next generation machine vision solution for manufacturing quality control. My name is Lars Jiskehau. I will take you through this webinar in uh, 30 minutes. A recording will be available and I have colleagues standing by in case you have any questions along the way. We will also contact you after the webinar in case you have any questions that you need answering to. KMO Analytics is a company that uh, has a mission to accelerate industrial digitalization through science-based analytics, including Quality 4.0. Now, I know there are many quality managers listening today, uh, and you all have a good knowledge about what Quality 4.0 is. Nevertheless, I will present, um, go through it after uh, our definition of that and how we can improve uh, or uh, get your uh, business closer to industry 4. Uh, quality 4.0. KMO Analytics has applied analytical science to solve process and product quality problems for decades. We've been around since uh, 1984. We have uh, 25,000 users and 3,000 uh, installations around the world. Many large, well-known companies among the list we have a presence in uh, several different industries and uh, much the next generation machine vision, of course, is applicable in many of these industries. We also think that it has a particular importance in food and perhaps pharma. We'll focus a little bit on that in this webinar. So in this presentation, I will go through the situation, the background, present our solutions and give some use cases in the end. So the situation today is that customers expect product to be competitively priced, exceptional quality and available immediately. And to meet these requirements, then manufacturers focus on optimization of the production lines, uh, resulting in uh, heavy automation. And this is in line with the uh, industry 4.0. However, quality control still relies on up to 80% of human resource for manual inspections to ensure that quality control standards are held. And in some industries, only a small sample of the products can be inspected, which increases the risk that defects are not detected. And today, without this human element, people or manufacturers experience uh, costly returns and lower customer satisfaction. And this is what is addressed by quality 4.0, right? And in a broad sense, quality management is about constantly pursuing excellence in all levels of an organization. And it affects people, processes, technology, etc. When it comes to quality 4.0, uh, that's the anticipated change, the fourth quality revolution, so to speak, where we want to uh, automate as much of these processes as possible through digitalization. Some of the important value props in uh, Quality 4.0 is to increase speed and quality of decision making, improve transparency and traceability, anticipate, cha anticipate changes and adapt to new circumstances and knowledge. So. Quality 4.0, of course, is, is and can be very disruptive. So it has to be implemented in steps. And uh, automated control of manufactured products and processes would be a huge step towards 4. quality 4.0. And this is where we, as a comp uh, KMO Analytics and, K and KMO Machine Vision, can uh, give a, a large contribution. So I said that quality 4.0 is all about digitalization. So let me put up some examples where we can where we imagine that we produce chocolate chip cookies, and uh, then we can balance the difference or um, uh, compare the different uh, ways of uh, quality uh, inspections, uh, the manual versus digital uh, way of doing it. And uh, to the top left, you see a cookie that has been 
basically tasted, um, uh, destroyed <laughs> in a sense, but in the in because um, this represents a product which is sent to the lab for testing, for destructive testing. And then to the bottom left, we have this um, visual inspection. What you can see, uh, what a human can see manually when a cookie passes on the conveyor belt, for instance, without destroying the cookie. And then we have the next generation machine vision to the left, where the cookie is uh, automatically uh, assessed. And I will compare these in the next slides. When you have visual quality assessment, of course, you can assess colors, size, shape, visible foreign elements, and so on. You can also see the visible chocolate amount and distribution. The problem with this is that it's a uh, quite subjective assessment, even after uh, training. Even after training, the assessment remains uh, subjective and the results are poorly documented. It's not always easy to understand why this cookie was accepted and the other one was not. So the other alternative, of course, is to take the sample to the lab and then you can measure whatever you want, really. You can get the chemical composition, chemical composition, the weight. You can um, submit it to a sensory panel and get uh, taste, odor, texture, and so on. What you can't do is exhaustive testing on all cookies because you would have nothing left to sell. Also, these uh, lab measurements tend to be costly and slow and they are destructive. So the next generation machine vision, what is that? That means that you can uh, do what you can see with the traditional machine vision, like colors, size, shape, th thickness, but also you can see into the product and see hidden chocolate amount and distribution, hidden foreign elements. What is the chemi chemical and physical composition? You can even train a multivariate model to predict sensory and preference, pre uh, sensory and preference, meaning that you can actually uh, predict at the time of production how this cookie is going to be received by the end users. The sampling is exhaustive. You don't have to limit your testing to a small subset of uh, produced units and you get results immediately. It's non-invasive, so you can sell the cookie afterwards and it's non-subjective. So you cover the full traceability, documentability. So it's hard to talk about uh, quality and quality management without uh, also uh, considering the cost of quality. So this is a very sort of simplified uh, presentation of the cost of quality, where I have split the cost into prevention costs and failure costs. So prevention costs also uh, include uh, appraisal costs. It's also uh, sometimes called the cost of good quality. So this is the cost of the measure, measures you're taking to prevent failures. And then you have the failure costs, which is the cost associated with uh, a product uh, going bad. So that includes uh, waste. It includes uh, sort of having to ship something to a customer externally and getting sort of uh, um, the risk of callbacks and returns and so on. So it covers both internal and external failures. And of course, the external failures are most important to, to, um, to sort of detect and avoid. When it comes to balancing these costs, it's very useful to plot uh, uh, the cost versus the quality level. And of course, if you put very little in effort into prevention, that means that you will get much higher degrees of failures and the total cost will be huge. And then, of course, you can put uh, more and more efforts into preventing failures to happen. And that means that the prevention cost will go down and the failure cost will, uh, the prevention cost will go up and the failure cost will go down. The thing is that in many cases, and food production is one of them, you can't really test all the produced samples. You can't really test all the products that are going out because the testing is by nature destructive. 
So you would have nothing less to sell. And that means that the prevention cost will be very high when you go towards high quality levels. And that also means that there is a balance uh, between cost and quality, right? So we need to find the optimum uh, where the total cost is uh, lowest. And that does not, in many cases, uh, correspond with the maximum quality. So there's a trade-off in the quality here. And you can make adjustments to reduce the prevention and uh, failure costs, uh, minimizing the total cost, but without really making any uh, large differences. With the next generation machine vision, however, you can achieve maximum quality at minimum total cost because we changed the picture. What we're doing now is that we install um, hardware and software on the production line. That means that the prevention costs for doing this manual uh, or doing this, uh, this uh, testing or products does no longer go to the roof when you test more samples. That means that the prevention costs uh, are actually stabilized. You no longer need to compromise the cost. So when you uh, test more and more samples and get a better, better understanding of the system and, um, and optimize the systems, then the failure costs are mitigated dramatically. And the total costs, as you see, there's no longer a balance between cost and quality, but the total, uh, the lowest cost is actually at the highest quality. And this is the place we want to be, of course. So we can't really talk about quality without uh, talking a little bit, getting technical to talk about uh, a little bit about statistics as well. And there are three, two or three uh, main topics that I want to just uh, explain what I mean. So we have the precision, the concept of precision, uh, where high precision means that you have a little random, you have a little random spread uh, between your samples. So if you're taking replicates, you get the same result every time. So if you're uh, shooting darts, the darts will hit the same uh, place every time. However, it does not necessarily mean that you're on target. It can be off target, but with high precision, like you see in the first, uh, uh, illustration here. And then uh, another concept is uh, about trueness, where high trueness means that your uh, observations on average are on target. But of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are have high precision, so it could be widespread. Uh, it could be that uh, observations are widespread, but on average on target. So only if you have high precision and high trueness, you have a high accuracy. Right? You have a low uncertainty. That means that you're precise on a target as illustrated at the bottom here. So what if we plot the trueness versus the precision? What do we get? So this is the situation where you have low precision and low trueness uh, illustrated in the lo lower left quadrant here. And that could be uh, some untrained operator coming to the conveyor belt and assessing the cookies as they fly by. Without any training, he will be both um, have high uncertainty, uh, sorry, uh, high random errors and uh, high systematic errors, meaning that uh, precision and the trueness will be low. After some training, the operator will be trained to hit the target on average. But there is a limit to what you can find uh, just by assessing a cookie uh, passing on the conveyor belt. So the, uh, even, though if the, even though the trueness is high, the precision might not be uh, very high. So then you can take your samples to the lab. And in the lab, you can get high precision and high trueness as well. So you can get the high accuracy that you need. The problem is that lab measurements are typically costly and very slow and uh, as I mentioned uh, also before, that the, in very many situations, you can't measure all the samples. So that means that there are many samples that are, the majority of samples may, may go untested. And that means that the training set might be 
different than the uh, full set of produced products. And you will end up here with a high precision, but low trueness. So where we want to be, of course, is to go back here. And we will argue that we can do that, this with next generation machine vision. So with KMO machine vision, we bring quality 4.0 to the production line. And I will explain what I mean by that. So this is a conveyor belt illustrating any uh, typical production process where we can uh, insert uh, sensors at various places. It can be at the end product where you see in the video below here where we monitor these uh, cookies uh, passing by. It doesn't have to be on the end product only. It can be uh, raw material characterization illustrated by the funnel to the right there. And it can be uh, monitoring of any unit uh, operations. So that means that you can um, actually uh, detect deviations early in the process and possibly make adjustments. So the earlier you find deviations, of course, the cheaper the lower the cost, right? So this is what uh, you can uh, see on screen, uh, possibly, uh, at the uh, conveyor belt. So KMO Analytics has been around for many, many years. And over the time, we have uh, established relationships with uh, many advanced sensor providers, uh, where we can connect with these instruments uh, and um, choose, build the experience and the knowledge to choose which sensor that uh, works well in different situations. Right. We have also the possibility to integrate with automation systems for process monitoring. So we're not only measuring the advanced sensors, the spectrometers, the hyperspectral uh, images, but also regular process control parameters that we get from this uh, integration system. And that means that uh, we can, we can uh, actually post results on our, uh, from our K Machine Vision platform and, and uh, the control system can pick those up. Uh, the control system can uh, uh, possibly start configurations in our platform and uh, also um, act on results. So you get this feedback that is uh, so uh, sort of important for, for uh, automation and for acting immediately on deviations. And depending on where you are, your uh, sort of level or, uh, or um, uh, what you're doing in the organization, you can get a presentation of results that suits you. So it's not only the line operator interface, but as a quality manager, you might be interested in, um, in uh, trend charts, uh, quality control charts, as you can see at the historic variation, you can, um, you can uh, look for uh, patterns there, illustrated on the top. If you're in management, you might uh, want to get a better overview of the entire uh, production line, uh, different unit operations, uh, different production lines and even different uh, factories, different countries. And then you can have a display um, collecting all this information across the various uh, the, the sites. And then as a remote operator, you can have a different screen where you look at any particular unit operation and get a notification or a warning if things are moving out of spec. So you can do the necessary adjustments in an intuitive manner. So what came Machine Vision does is that it builds on our long experience in solving product and process problems. We use scientifically proven methods that bring insights to domain experts. That means that you can optimize your process based on an increased understanding of what's happening. We use validated transparent analysis, meaning that we don't only tell you 
how well your model is working, but also why it is working and when, it, when it's going to fail. We can uh, collect the relevant data at the relevant places. We're not interested in uh, big data since that is often associated with irrelevant data. We want to collect the uh, um, relevant data and we have the tools to, um, to analyze those. We get actionably uh, instant results. That means that we can uh, uh, act on them and we also have compliance solutions uh, for regulated industries. So what came of machine vision does is that it realizes the benefits of quality 4.0 uh, with improved quality because all the products are accurately inspected, uh, lower cost of quality because prevention cost is independent of samples as I illustrated before and it's possible to reduce the failure cost to a minimum. We can use it for preventive quality control by adding these sensors anywhere than in the process and use them to indicate, to uh, flag events when something is going out of specs. It's improving operations because of uh, the real-time quality testing and uh, we have improved documentation, automated documentation as well. And we have a per product documentation for improved traceability. So that was our solution and uh, I'm going to present some uh, examples at the end for where, where KMO has actually implemented uh, part of this or uh, all of this in various uh, scenarios. The first example is an example of uh, inline quality grading of mussel foods and this is actually a fish producer producing fish fillets and uh, they saw a big value in documenting the nutrient profile of fish fillets because it allowed them to target different markets and customer profiles. And of course, uh, if they don't have that, you can get complaints or giveaway. Complaints that they didn't get the um, quality that they paid for or giveaway because you don't really know the quality. So you have to uh, uh, sort of uh, give away better products for a lower price. The challenge here, of course, is that lab measurements are destructive. If you take a fish fillet and measure it in a lab, you can't sell the fish fillet after. And so this actual quality testing is limited to a very small percentage. They're also very slow, uh, the lab measurement. That means that uh, samples must be taken weeks or months even before slaughter. And what we delivered with KMO Machine Vision is a nutrient profile uh, predicted from a combination of different advanced sensors, hyperspectral and others. And this system uh, could then be installed inline for real-time quality grading and labeling of individual fish. So a huge improvement here. Another example is monitoring raw materials to ensure quality. The situation here that uh, it's a factory uh, producing uh, stock cubes and they experienced a lot of uh, uh, variations in quality, often leading to uh, stoppages and uh, waste. The root cause here was uh, very hard to find and it seemed to vary from day to day. So what KMO delivered were advanced sensors put in the right place. And in this case, we found a large variation in raw material used. And uh, that enabled us to monitor this variation and uh, we, uh, for instance, moisture was found to uh, vary a lot. So that could be, um, the process parameters could be adjusted according to that. This is an example from uh, manufacturing. So we're moving away from uh, food now, but uh, this is an example uh, where we can eliminate failures with inline quality control of printed circuit boards. Printed circuit boards, uh, these particular circuit boards are used in the automotive industry. And of course, failures here can be very expensive because it means that uh, uh, there will be callbacks, right, in high numbers. And this, these callbacks can even ha happen <laughs> years after the, the circuit board has been installed and sold. The internal quality control is therefore very important because the external cost of failure is tremendous. 
And uh, this company had already installed um, a machine vision, traditional machine vision system, measuring thousands of weld points on each individual circuit board, resulting in 30,000 parameters that was being monitored. What they experienced is that that was completely information overload. They couldn't use all that information uh, much because it was very difficult to link uh, all that information to off-spec production units and very hard to adjust process accordingly. So what KMO could deliver in this case was an explorative analysis that revealed systematic patterns and these systematic patterns can be could be monitored in real time. And this led to full quality testing of every product and also early indications of equipment wear out. So they saw found systematic patterns that actually indicated that equipment had to be replaced. As a last example, I want to um, sort of move away from the production altogether and go into the field. And uh, this is a project we did for uh, field measurement of medicine authenticity. Uh, and in particular, in developing countries, uh, the availability of medicines may be scarce and there is a risk of counterfeits. Counterfeits exist and the labeling, therefore, of medicines are uh, or must be considered inaccurate. So inaccurate uh, labeling of life-saving medicine, of course, can be a serious matter because if you give incorrect dosages, that means that the disease might not be treated or even that if you administer too much or the wrong drug, it can have serious side effects, right? So what we delivered in this case was a handheld NIR scanner to measure tablets on site. And spectral matching was performed in the cloud to verify that compounds are correct. So that means that uh, the doctors on site can actually uh, be sure that the medicines they administer are correct and given in the right dosages. So to sum up all of this, it can be summarized in uh, three points. There is no compromise between cost and quality. You can have both. Quality can be measured real time with lab-like accuracy. And lastly, KMA Machine Vision is a quick win towards your realization of quality 4.0. If you want to see more information about uh, KMO Machine Vision, you can go to kmo.com slash CMV. Uh, my uh, colleagues uh, will contact you uh, and uh, hear if you have any questions. And we are, of course, very eager to hear about uh, how you are implementing uh, Quality 4.0 in your business. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attendance.